why would anyone buy this ancient old keyboard nowadays? Me, welcome back keyboard fans. I recently had an opportunity to purchase one of the keyboard off of the Drops website nearly for free. So it's time to choose one. Hmm, I pre-ordered Kazawa Enter 67 just recently. I've had experience with the Alt and Control and Karina. Ah, uh, wait. I know what I want. This is what used to be the budget premium keyboard from ancient days. Well, ancient days as in just like three years ago. Anyways, you know what's not ancient and outdated? The YouTube subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Keyboard trending is changing rapidly. It was only three years ago that the hot swap keyboard really finally started trending. It's crazy to think that most and all keyboards came non hot swappable like five years ago. And now we have tons of switches to pick from. Keyboards are infinitely changing, and the keycaps, the hot swap, the software, the RGB diffuser, built-in screen, and so on. What else is out there? So I decided, hey Squint, let's just stop looking at the most trending things and just look at what was good back then. So I picked this keyboard. This is Idabao ID80 V2. I couldn't get my hands on the original ID80 due to discontinuation, but this one is still available in Drop. It's an aluminum case with a brass metal plate to give you a hefty weight. The underneath of the keyboard is fully made with acrylic bottom for the RGB lighting show. But wow, look at this. This keyboard is gorgeous. One thing to note is that this keyboard has a plate integrated top case, which is not a great idea, and I'll explain that later. So really, the only thing that this keyboard is missing from the outside is the dial knob. When you look at the most of the modern keyboard, you, you tend to find the dial knob on most of the keyboards. Well, okay, okay, there are new keyboards without the knob and some of you prefer those, just a, you know, personal preference. Okay, so what else does this keyboard have? Uh, we have a south-facing LED, nice. I love how Idabao just knew what they were doing back then. What we don't have in this keyboard though is a gasket mount. If you look, almost all keyboard nowadays will say it's a gasket mount. Well, whether it's true or not, but they said that it is. But this one is a top mount keyboard. Meaning, the PCB and the plate is actually mounted to the top case of the board. This method of mounting is kind of revolutionary back then. Most of the keyboards back then had a bottom case mount, but this one was mounted on the top. So is it bad? Is it good? Is it just okay? Well, we'll see about that during the sound test. Alrighty, so enough of the keyboard. So switches, yes. Uh, I don't want to stay outside of the trend when it comes to the switches. I'll be honest, the switches back in the day sucked a lot. Not only there wasn't many choices out there, but the switches were just bone dry. I think more than half of the switches sold nowadays will carry some sort of a lube from the factory. Some are as good as hand lubing. If I can save some 3-4 to four hours of lubing just by buying the good factory lube switches, you can take my money. That being said, Echo is one of the best companies with the good budget lube switches. I'll be using the piano switches, and when I pressed each individual switches, they will all sound very consistent, meaning they hand lubed each switches to a pretty consistent level. So yeah, I tested all the Echo's lubed switches and I just haven't found a single switch that I was like, ew, let's just lube this one. So Echo, you guys are doing really great. So if you don't want to go through the putting grease on your hands, consider factory lubed switches. Make sure to watch some videos though, some of them can be bad. Echo piano switches are linear and they have an operating force of 48 grams. This is a really interesting switch though. The total travel of the switch is 3.5 millimeter. To think that most of the linear switches come with a 4mm, it gives you the feeling that you can actually hit the key faster. Though, silver switches have a shorter total distance. If you didn't like the silver switches due to the shorter travel, try this one out. Next up is keycaps. Since the switches were piano themed, I thought it would be nice to go with the something like a white on black keycaps from Drop. These are DCX keycaps from Drop, and I love the quality and the sound that it makes. It just looks clean overall. The double shot ABS will provide you with the clean mid-pitched typing sound. This is one of the very good examples that ABS can be a really good quality keycap. So with that, it comes to the keyboard. How does a stock sound of an ID80 V2 sound like? It's honestly not bad. Uh, good in fact. The only thing this keyboard is suffering from is the reverb of the top case. Well, let me remind you the plate situation on this keyboard. This one uses the integrated plate to mount your switches. Meaning the vibration and the impact from your switches are traveling through the whole top case. 
with the hollowness, it makes the pop sound when typing, not thock. Good thing is that we can modify this one though. This keyboard is one of the easiest one to take it apart. Top case is acting like a switch plate and the bottom case is acrylic plate. This keyboard is a south facing LED with the screwed in stabilizers and uh, I'm, only to, I'm only planning to deploy a few mods to this keyboard. I will be taping the stab pads from the PCB to refine the stab bottom out sound. Then I'll be using the PE foam that comes with the keyboard to wrap around the PCB. This method filters rough bottom out sound coming from the switches. Then I'll load my stabilizers, then cut out the PE foam for them. I'm almost done here. I just have to assemble all my parts back together and voila. This keyboard should sound better, but uh, will it be though? Let's hear it. You know what? I don't think I fixed the issue of the hollowness. In fact, I think I just changed the sound of the board rather than making it better. The cause of it has to do with the top plate being integrated. With it being the top mount without any gasket to the plate, uh, there's nothing to prevent the vibration and the sound travel back to you. The whole top case actually amplifies the sound coming from the switches. So unless I can figure some ways out to prevent the vibration coming from the switches to the top case, I'll just never be able to make this keyboard as sound good as the modern keyboards. So final thoughts on this keyboard, well it's solid honestly. I think it is still a viable option even nowadays with all the trends. However though you can't really say that it will perform as good as the Monskick series, Keychron Q series, the Zoom 75, and all the other trending keyboards. Especially if this keyboard isn't on sale, it costs you 200 US dollars. There's a lot of different options you can get nowadays with that kind of money. Even just a non-modified keyboard sounds better than this IWID 80 V2. So what's the takeaway? Well, the takeaway for today is that the there are reasons why people are going crazy about certain types of keyboard. The keyboards are getting released today are massively different than three years ago. So before you buy any keyboards, research them and buy them. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you liked my video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I will see you guys next time.